Here we go. Have you ever played a game where characters talked in a foreign language that you don't know, and there aren't any translation subtitles for it? Maybe you want to know so you have an easier time reading enemy attacks or positions. Maybe you want to know so you can immerse yourself in the lore of the characters and the setting. Or maybe you're just curious. It's been 18 years since the release of the original RE4. As soon as Capcom announced a remake, I hoped that they kept all the Spanish in the game. And they delivered. Oh boy, did they deliver. Welcome to What Are They Saying? Resident Evil 4 Remake. First, I want to start off with a shout out to iGots Tats, who very kindly gifted me the game. Check out his Twitch and YouTube channel because he's a great friend and a fun guy. Second, I'm not sure I got all of it, and there is a lot of it. Way more than there was in the original. There may be lines I missed because they only play under very specific circumstances or because they're spoken too quietly and get drowned out by the music or even background noise, even though I turned a lot of that down. Nevertheless, I'll do my best to be thorough and accurate. Without further ado, this is the very first cutscene as soon as you hit start. Rough stuff, but it introduces the cult of the Los Illuminados. As mentioned in the original RE4, what are they saying? Los Illuminados means the Enlightened, led by Lord Osmond Sadler. Something I want to correct from the original video is that there isn't a word for Lord in Spanish. There is. You can call someone Señor or even Don. I thought it would have been too informal since it's also like calling someone Mr. in English, but it turns out that's totally fine and it applies to Lord as a title of nobility or in the sense of a deity or god. I clarified that with my family, but I know a lot of people in the comments pointed that out as well, so thank you to everybody for helping me with the correction. Now we rejoin Leon Kennedy being brought to the rural countryside by these two police officers. Thankfully, they get subtitles, so I don't have to worry about that. Later on in the Hunter's Lodge, Leon attempts to speak to this clearly not infected villager. Sorry to barge in like this. Busco a un policía. Vino aquí. It's really hard to hear him since he's mumbling under his breath, but he's reciting the fanatic ramblings painted on the walls outside of the room. It's a little all over the place, but here's what I've been able to make out. Oh, señor. Protege nuestras almas ante este débil que pretende destruirnos, porque no temeremos. Hasta el fin viviremos contigo por siempre. Tu consumirá en las llamas a los que nos ofenden. I think it's also printed on the tarps in the basement, but with all the folds and smudges, it's tricky to make out the full sentences. When we find one of the officers, there's a conversation with the one back at the car. He clearly asks for help, but then his last words before screaming are really hard to understand. I heard either soy or estoy. Because I can't hear the first word, I'm not exactly sure what he's saying. Really making me work here, Capcom. I read you. What's your situation? The first real enemy that the game throws at us is the villager from before, but now he is risen as a ganado desnucado. Ganado means cattle, the los iluminados viewing their flock as livestock to be sacrificed. Desnucado means broken neck. Retreating to the top of the lodge, there's a map of the entire region, which is apparently named Val de Lobos. Take this next part with a grain of salt, 
but the Resident Evil wiki says that that translates to Valley of Wolves, and that's half right, but it would be Valle de Lobos, not Val de Lobos. There's also the Iglesia, or church, and then a something del bosque. I wish it was a little more high definition, but this is as high as I can put my graphics before my computer overworks itself and the performance suffers. Thankfully, it gets much easier from here on out. So, joder is a very vulgar word. It's the equivalent of dropping an F-bomb. No me jodas, depending on context, can mean don't mess with me, or in these guys' case, it's more like, are you fucking kidding me? Here we go. Where's everyone going? Bingo? Well hey, at least he warned his buddy, especially since friendly fire is on. So remember before when I said Señor is the same as saying Mister? Well, when Luis refers to Ashley as a señorita, he's referring to her as a miss or a young lady. Later, amigo. Before we leave this area, remember, always save the dog. He's a good boy. These colmillos, on the other hand, they're not good boys. Now's as good a time as any to point out that there are notes scattered all throughout the game that have clear legible writing on them, but if you press the examine button, they're fully translated. There are some exceptions, such as the merchant requests that say Petición Oficial. I'm choosing to leave most of them be because, well, they've already been translated. Even this map in the church safe room, despite being smudged and missing letters, is translated when you examine it. The only part not included is this line right here, Salamandre del Lago, the salamander of the lake, foreshadowing the upcoming boss fight. After the del Lago fight, it transitions to nighttime, where things start getting spooky. Chanting can now be heard in the darkness, 
a chant that will be repeated by Ganados for the rest of the village section. This is also our introduction to Las Plagas, the parasites controlling the hapless villagers at the center of the Los Illuminados takeover. This Plaga variant, with its razor-sharp tendril, is called a Guadaña, which translates to Scythe. Now that we've collected the key to the church, there's only one more obstacle before rescuing Ashley. Gloria a las plagas. Gloria a las plagas. El Gigante the giant. With Ashley now in tow, a nice addition is that a lot of the lines the enemy spoke before have changed to reflect that now there's a plus one. Let's go! No Hey, I see you found your missing senorita. Senorita has a name and it's Ashley. You are? Name's Luis. Encantado. Great. We all have names. Now then. Let's get out of this village. We only have one more boss to fight, and it's against Chief Mendez. Hasta luego. <laughs> The area the fight takes place in is called the Slaughterhouse, and on a sign out front, hidden behind the spray-painted No Trespassing, is Matadero. With Mendez defeated, we need to regroup with Luis somewhere inside the castle. Come to the courtyard inside of the castle. We can meet up there. Ciao. As he once said, crawl out of one hole and into another. Muerte! Mata is done. Matarlo. The zealots here are led by Ramon Salazar, a castellan who has fallen under the control of the Los Illuminados. Oh, señor, somos tu ganado. Oh, señor, somos tu martillo. Que los vivos reciban tu juicio. Que los muertos se consagren al señor. Down in the dungeons are some poor unfortunate souls. This guy had Nadia Escapa carved onto his chest. This one scrawled The Light is Dead in blood. And finally, one of the most recognizable creatures from the original, a Garador. As stated in the original Resi 4 video, Garra is a claw, but Garador isn't really a word. That being said, this time around I thought a little bit more about the suffix dor. While it doesn't always apply, Dor can turn a word into one who has or is. For example, a matador is someone who kills. So maybe that's what they were going for with garador, one who has claws. The same can apply to the regenerators encountered later in the game. This plaga evolution is referred to as a mandibula, which is a jaw. <laughs> Remember that red guy who unleashed the El Gigante? Well, he's back and can seemingly control the plagas like Sadler can. Gloria a las plagas! Gloria a las plagas! Something a friend of mine pointed out to me on Discord is that when enemies get staggered and they say, my body, or I can't walk, 
that maybe it's not the people saying it, but the parasites controlling them. And, um, that's not a pleasant thought to think. Especially when you factor in the Aranya Plagas, who can further manipulate people's bodies. An Aranya is a spider, and based on their appearance, yeah, I'd say that's appropriate. <laughs> In the courtyard, there's something kind of cool. The castle flags are in Latin and translate to death be with you. Not only do a lot of modern languages originate from Latin, but Latin is often used for religious purposes or for mottos. A motto is a short sentence or phrase chosen as encapsulating the beliefs or ideals guiding an individual, family, or institution. For example, and please forgive my pronunciation on some of these, the United States of America's motto is E Pluribus Unum, meaning, out of many, one. Spain's motto is Plus Ultra. Nice. While we're on the subject, another example of Latin is printed on the silver and gold tokens that you win from the merchant's shooting range. Palma non sine pulvere, meaning, the palm is not without dust. According to what I found on the internet, this is a quote from a Roman poet named Horace, and can be interpreted as, no reward without effort. The next Plaga enemy that we come across are the Armadura. These things haven't changed at all from the original game. They're still suits of armor controlled by tendrils of the parasites. The other creatures in the castle are Novistadors, the giant bugs that an in-game note name drops as the Unseen, even though it's more wordplay, much like Garador. Originally, they could go invisible, making their moniker more appropriate. This time, they just camouflage themselves against the environment, which, sure, can catch you unawares, but if you're careful and pay attention, you get the drop on them. Unfortunately, our rescue of Ashley doesn't go as planned, and we're tossed down to the mines by Salazar's right hand, the Verdugo. In this version, there's actually a backstory for the Verdugo. Not only does it straight up say that Verdugo means executioner, but it also says their original names, Isidro Uriarte Talavera and his faithful hound, Pesanta. But we only fight one Verdugo. In the original, the second one is consumed by Salazar when he transforms for his boss fight. In the remake, the second one just disappears. I wonder if Ada has something to do with that. In the next section, we're accompanied by Luis while we find our way back to the surface. Two peas in a pod, or as Luis puts it, Don Quixote and Sancho Panza. Believe me, I know. Get on that lift. The fresh air is calling our names. Por fin. Now that we're out, we got a bone to pick with Salazar, so we must tackle the last gauntlet of the castle section. The clock tower. Stop pasando. No. No. Cortadle la cabeza. We're late to save Ashley again, and that means we've got to take out a mutated Ramon who darts around the arena, trash-talking you almost the entire time. Pulgarfito does translate to Little Thumb, but it's also a variant of the folktale Tom Thumb, a name coming from how he was the size of someone's thumb. Sounds like little Ramon is projecting. It's also worth mentioning that his boss theme is called Baile de la Muerte, the Dance of Death. With Salazar defeated, we move on to the last third of the game, the island. Gone are villagers and zealots, now we deal with soldiers armed with stun batons and rocket launchers. I want to be mad, but the man landed a trick shot. I have to respect that. 
We're gonna rapid fire through a lot of these lines, because the soldiers arguably have more dialogue than the villagers and the zealots. Though I do want to call attention to when they say, Tragarte esto. Tragarte esto. <laughs> I'm sure what they were going for was something like, eat this, but tragar is specifically to swallow. So, swallow this. Doesn't really roll off the tongue, but eh. After being cured, there's one last note in Luis's laboratory about the Plaga hierarchy. Dominante, meaning dominant. Superior, which is the exact same word in English, spelling and all. And subordinada, which is a subordinate or someone who is subservient. Finally, there's the big bad boss himself, Saddler. As you dwindle his health down, I can hear him saying something in Spanish, but since his voice is so distorted, I can only make out a few things. Take this with another grain of salt, but as the first part of the battle concludes, he has some parting words. If I'm wrong, I would like somebody to reach out and let me know. But if I'm right, I think he makes a callback to the original game, a phrase that hasn't been heard all throughout the remake. And there you have it. Now you know what they're saying in Resident Evil 4 Remake. If there's anything I missed, let me know in the comments along with your thoughts on the remake, the video, or theories on how long it'll take until they make a separate Waze DLC. Or maybe even a DLC featuring Luis. 
If there are any, I'll definitely be back. I know this video took way too long to make, and I apologize to all the people I've kept waiting, but if you stuck it out for this long, thank you. Truly I mean it when I say thank you for supporting the channel as long as you have. Adios y gracias a todos.